Okay, so th this this is actually, this one is in the example folder. When you download the module, you'll find this one. It is not that easy, but the way, the, the reason why we put the, this in is because it has three angulated screw holes and it has a hole coming out of the, the buckle surface of the canine. And this is why we put it in. We, we, we've sort of dived a bit in the deep end, Wolf. What do you think? Or oh, mind you. With the tutorials, we want to, in, in the first, uh, like with the example, we want to incorporate um, anything that you might come across. So um, we, we, we don't just want to take a straightforward hybrid where it's super, super easy. With the tutorials, we have to cover certain scenarios. And this is why we chose this one. Uh, Wolfgang, I'm sorry, just I've just got to just do <clears throat> my own my own installation. I thought I had it done, which I, I think I did, but it's not there. So well, we can just cover that quickly anyway if we, we want to. Um I thought it was installed. We're gonna go pi, we're gonna type in pi menu. And then what we're going to do is we're going to import and we're going to replace. We're going to look for it in the module folder. Here's the I bar. And then we're going to do the website activation. I'm not going to do the website activation. I'll just grab my, my activation password that I have on my computer. It goes in there and then we import it. And then we've got the I bar and then just preference and then save the the preference file. So here we can see the, the I bar over here. <clears throat> so also what I'm going to do is I'm going to just kind of put the other add on, which is like a shortcut where we can see my, my moves. So whenever I do something, you'll be able to see here on the left hand side uh, that that will then pop up. I'll have the text a different color and just to change that a little bit, maybe this one a little bit bluish, and then that's about it. All right. <clears throat> so this one was made in, I don't know, I, th I think it could have been a blender for dental one. I'm not I'm not hundred percent sure. By the way, you can make these in our crown and bridge work module. But if you're using ex exocad or three shape, Basically, what we are looking for is we're looking for a good mesh geometry, and this mesh geometry needs to be intact. So we're not looking at intersecting vertices where the teeth are, and we're not looking for screw channels that have um, like incompleted screw channels. So we're looking because in the end, we want to split it. We want to cut it into two sections or even more than two sections if you want to, but bullions do not work if the mesh structure is corrupted and not working properly. Wolf, have you got something to say on that or not? No, this, this, is, this could be a common error with meshes. Um, it does help to inspect your mesh. So while Blender does have a 3D print toolbox on the right-hand side, you can run a check and that will usually give you um, a couple of um, details on um, overlapping faces or um, non-manifold edges. However, it, it is a good habit of going into edit mode just by pressing tab and actually study, have a look at the mesh. And if you, um, if you suspect something, uh, zoom into the area. If there's something overlaying something else, you can just drag these little vertices. Very easy to, to rectify um, and mesh as, as such. All right, well, so the, the first thing we want to do is we want to put it in the center of Blender. And that's because every hybrid coming from a different program may be in a different coordination system. What we want to do is we, we bring it to the center. So we're going to the model designer where it says aligning to center and we're going to click on the target and this will name a target some of you are familiar with how this works we're going to then put um, three points on on the on the model or the hybrid or whatever it could be a skull or whatever we want to align that to the center we're going to click on align yeah, and then okay points, this is four points yeah 
Yeah, four points. So, so here we've got it now in the center. And this is the starting point for the eye biomarker because we want the teeth going in the in the in this top direction. If it's an upper, we want the teeth also moving towards the upper. And this is basically because we didn't want to duplicate the model, the module, because otherwise it gets so very long and confusing, splitting the upper and the lower um, uh, um, hybrids. All right, so <clears throat> the first thing we're going to do is we're going to name it hybrid, and that will give us a change of color. That's just to confirm that now the script is working and we are ready to go for it. <clears throat> if, it's, if it's not the right way around, we're going to rotate it over here. But in this case, we've got it correct. So the implant interface is always facing in the negative Z direction downwards. Yeah, the next thing we want to do is we want to put our cursor down and we're going to make these tubes. Um, we, so once we've got the tube on the scene, we're going to use the G key and the S key to scale it down a little bit or so on. The idea is to encapsulate this entire screw hole for, to, in order to protect the screw hole. So we need to do this for each and every one of these. A, a quick way of doing it, we, we can do, we can rotate it, but it's kind of difficult sometimes to look down the screw hole. I would sometimes go tab into edit mode, select a vertice, and then blender rotates around that specific vertice, around the selection. And that's a quick way of actually putting it where you need it to be. And then we're going to make another one. Now, this, this screw channel has has an angle in it and we're going to we're going to talk about that in a in a few minutes how we're going to deal with these angles oh by the way the cursor is used a lot in blender and this is why we included the model designer in the high with the hybrid because we've got basic uh, tutorials so if you're new to blender it does help to know how to navigate and the model designer tutorials will actually show you what is the cursor, how you navigate, what are the, the windows um, that you can open and close. So it's a handy little tool if, if you want to also use that for making models. Okay, here we're going to do the last one. Note that I'm placing the cursor not at the bottom of the screw hole, but on the top of the screw hole. There's a good reason for that, and that's when we make these tubes. The, the top of the tube is four millimeters above your hybrid. So if, if you're placing that at the bottom, then it may not be high enough. So, okay, so this is about it. Um, it's a it's a good idea to save your files as you go going. So I'll just save my file. I'll just put some gibberish in there for now. The next step is we're going to we're going to um, change these tubes. So I'm going to select one, and we're going to edit these tubes. And this puts us into transparent mode. There's like a tick show X-ray mode. This tick you can check box on and off. Notice that the top transparent thing toggles as well. Now the whole idea of this is to place this vertice where your screw hole head finishes. It doesn't have to be exactly, but the reason behind that is because we want the screw to engage into metal or a harder, a strong structure. Otherwise, when we split it, we may make a split going right around this um, hole and we don't want that. So we're re-engineering the actual screw hole and you'll see that as well. We'll get to that in a few minutes. Then using control A, we can expand this. Now this looks a bit like a bulb. Um, I'm going to focus on the ones that don't have angles first. Okay. Now, this vertice we can set up and down. So if you want to be super precise, you can go into the item item tab here and you can see here, it says minus 14.45. So if you, if, you're, if you know your screw <coughs> head is two millimeters, you can then shift this up to then 12.45 or something. So this is a good way of measuring where this specific vertice is going to go. But I don't think it's 
absolutely 100% precise to, to you, as long as it catches into the, the metal. Okay, now the reason why I'm bulking this out is for quite a few reasons. We want to protect the screw hull for, for when we're sculpting the hybrid. Also, we want to make these tubes for later on when we're thickening our hybrid up and preserving the screw hull as well. So if you look at it from the side, it actually makes like, like an area, like a zone, a barrier around it. Okay. <clears throat> now, how do we deal with these screw holes? Actually, do we have another one? I think this one doesn't have a screw hole. So let's just set this one up first. Oh, you mean so it's, it it's straight, that one? Okay, some of yeah, those are, so are angled, and Michael will show how to deal with that in a minute. So pulling out, making a bulb shape underneath will then create a cone, which you'll see in a minute. Yeah, also the cone needs to sort of simulate, it would be good to get it parallel with, if you're worried, because, you know, this may be 30 degrees or something, the multi-unit abutment. It is a good idea to sort of get it parallel if, if we are re-engineering these, um, the, the screw um, hole. So, okay, the next thing is, let's save this as we're going, file, save. Um, we're going to select these three where we, we know they are, um, we're going to make these things, someone coined it ghosts, which I thought was quite a, quite a good idea. So we've called it ghosts. So we're making these ghosts, which is, it actually extracts the screw channel out of your hybrid, as you can see here. And this makes it easier for us to encapsulate the screw hull because now we can actually see it. We can physically see it. So, okay, let's put that one down here. Control A to expand it out. And for those of you who aren't familiar with the shortcut key, Alt B on your keyboard can cross section something which is super, super handy to have. So, okay, let's just put this one there. And then this one, we're going to place it in the long axis of the screw hole like that. You, you can always use control A to scale it. So we don't want something where you can see this is visible like that. We need, we need to have this screw hole definitely encapsulate it. Otherwise, down the line, when we're thickening our hybrid, you'll see that it's going to affect the inside of your hole, and we don't want that. Okay, so we'll do this one now. Have, have you got anything to add in this, Wolfgang? No, I was just waiting for you to make a little sketch as well, so you can, um, with the pencil. Okay, so again, in the long axis, like that, you can see the line should run in the long axis. Control A to scale, Control A to scale. This is important to know your shortcut keys in Blender. It's super, super helpful to know these things. Okay, so we've got one left to do, which we'll do now. We'll go edit. I'm going to take this one up. Here you can see there's an area which is not covered. So we need to make sure that this area is covered. Like that, control A. Take this one. Put where the screw head would sort of finish. Something like that. And then we like that. I think that sort of covers it, huh, Wolf? Yes, that's it. Okay. Now, we can toggle these tubes and we can toggle the cones. The cones we haven't made yet, okay? The hybrid is over here. Next thing is we're going to just double check. Like here, for example, we, we don't have this, this little area covered over here. You can see that. So again, I'm going to just go in there using the G key to grab Control A to make it a little bit bigger. So I want to make sure that this is covered. Okay. Just give a once-over inspection like that. That's fine. 
Next thing is we're going to take these and we're going to make these cones. Now, if you analyze these cones, I'll just zoom into one of them in transparent mode. You'll see that they've been, they've, they've gone to where the screw head, where we've actually placed that, sl slightly rounded, which helps later on because we don't want any sharp edges. <clears throat> okay. Good, I'll just save that. Are there any questions so far for those of you that have this iBar module? Would be a good time to answer a few questions. <clears throat> Nothing, Wolf, any questions? No, look, I'll keep my eye on the message window. So if you guys want to um, type away, feel free to do that. And I'll relay those questions to Mike as well. Excellent. Now we can see the speckled area over here, and this is actually the ghost. So we can hide these ghosts, these three of them, if you, yeah. Now we can see where this tube runs in. Clearly this hybrid wasn't designed thick enough because I've done cross measurements of this tooth on the, on the distal of the tooth. It's not thick enough. Now we need to, we need to, um, work on this hybrid so that we have enough thickness. So first thing I want to do is I'm going to create a mask protection. Now all the work that we've been doing now, the groundwork, is to create a mask. Now what exactly is a mask? <clears throat> a mask is um, an area which is now protected. We can, we can sculpt, we can do whatever we want to this hybrid as far as you know, blender sculpting tools are, we can inflate or deflate or whatever we want to do, these areas will not be affected. And so this is the purpose of us having created this mask. If you feel, if you see something that's not covered, simply grab your tube and then go into edit mode, scale it up, control A and make a new mask. You just click on create mask here one more time. Make sure that your screw holes are protected. That's very important. Now we've added a feature here, paint on layer. Now we can see here where, the, where, where, this, where it's colored dark that it is actually very, very thin. And if we want to come through with the bar, we need at least, you know, 0.7 millimeters thickness, you know, otherwise we, we're coming in there with a bar and this is paper thin, that's not going to work. So we have to think about all of these things. So let's save as we go. Okay, there I'm going to make, I'm going to paint a layer. So what that's, um, what this does, it's, it creates an opportunity for us to draw a layer and make it thicker, okay? So this is set at 0 0.7 millimeters. You can set this more or less if you want to. If I go into cross section and I look at it from the side, this is a layer that engages slightly into the hybrid because we're going to unify this onto our, our hybrid. So if I, if I type in here one millimeter, you can see how it expands outwards. Let's keep that at 0 0.7. The offset, you don't really have to touch. That, that actually brings that inwards like that. But we've set it at, we've set that at 0 0.9, I think it was. It's just slightly in, inside of it. Um, then we've got unify or cut. And um, we've, we've got a video on cut because some people have wanted to maybe reline the, the bar underneath it. So that's where we've got the cut, but I'm not going to engage in that um, tonight, um, today. Well, for us, it's tonight. Um, we, we want to make sure that we stay clear of our uh, multi-unit attachment because once it's unified, it will smooth it as well. So if you go too close, say you're touching or whatever, it's going to affect your multi-unit abutments geometry. And at no cost do we want to have that affected. This is absolutely 100%. We do not want this affected. <clears throat> I'm going to 
make a little bit more over here. And if you if you look carefully, <clears throat> like I've discussed earlier, we've got a problem here we need to address with that tooth. It's it's just not thick enough. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to paint this upwards. Okay. Now in this example, we we're running danger of having this on the inside like that because it's so very thin. So in that case, I'm going to go minus. We have to make sure none of that goes on the inside. And you'll see, okay, well, this, this spot is a problematic spot. But we're going to deal with that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to click on Unify. <clears throat> now, we are able to do one layer on top of another layer. So if you want to thicken more than 0 0.7 or whatever, we can simply click that again. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to close that up as well. Like this. I'll just cl close that. Like that. Okay. Make sure that it's not on the inside. Well, it's still a little bit on the inside here. So quite a problematic thing. So we're going to unify that again. And then after that, we can smooth as we wish because we've got this mask. Okay, so I'm going to click on smooth and we're going to smooth that down nicely like that. Excellent. So this is not always the case, you know, mostly when we design these hybrids, we, we, we cater for enough thickness. We've, we've only put that in so that users will know exactly what to do. Here, what I'm going to do is briefly, I'm going to remove the mask because I want to go closer to smooth it. Please make very, very sure when you're using that, that you're not going close to your multi-unit abutments. Like that. And like that. Good. We're going to move on to the next menu. Now, so we're going to exit. Okay. Now we know it's thick enough, we can make our bar on the inside. So there's several um, thickness checking mechanisms, and this is only the first one. So as we make yep. the bar later, we have more thickness checks along the way. Yeah. And as I've said, most bars aren't, aren't like that. Um, before, actually, before we close this down, um, I'd just like to mention that <clears throat> we'd like to make sure that where we design the, the actual um, inside uh, bar structure, we want to have a smooth, smooth surface around these multi-unit abutments, because I have seen some of them, they've got a very sharp, like a ridge lap and we don't want any sharp areas. This also gives us a good opportunity to get rid of convex and concave surfaces, because that's just doesn't seem, that's just a no-no in, in dentistry. We want to make sure that the patient can clean at all times, okay? Okay, we're going to engage now in, make, in designing this structure. Okay, next menu. I'm going to put my cursor down and I'm going to click draw, draw bar. Now you'll see these cones come up so that we can, we can, we can sort of design around these cones. Now you don't have to, but it, it gives us a clear indication how close we are to these the multi-unit abutments. So if I hide the cones, you can sort of see, you, don't, you, you can do it like this as well if you want to, if you're confident, you know, once you know how this whole thing works. So what I'm doing here is I'm using E left click. Some of you don't want to use E left click, you just want to extrude. So click on the extrude, and then you can just merely left click. Now, Blender and I think maybe ExoCAD and other programs, they have a different 
mouse moving structure. I, I don't quite know how, how theirs works. Okay, now, okay, we'll just go all the way. Now, some, some of you may want to, I, don't, I think it's called a Californian bar or whatever. They actually come up top. Now, there's two schools of thoughts. Some, some people want to make the bar as small as possible and others want to make it as big as possible. So you, this is something that you need to design or think about. Well, should we keep it on the bottom or should we go on top? What do you think? Uh, maybe can you go bottom bit and then lingually go higher maybe? Then you capture both parts. <clears throat> higher like this, eh? Yeah, and then up, up a bit. So we get a bit, bit of both. Okay, like that. Okay. Now, when we're designing, we don't want any sharp areas. This is another thing I just want to touch on. So we, 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 cannot, have, we cannot have something like this like a sharp 90 degree angle. Because once we, once we extrude the bar, we need curve, nice, nice gentle curves. Uh, otherwise, when we're angling the bar later, then the vertices are just going to overlap each other and you'll see in, in a few minutes. <clears throat> what we're gonna do is we're gonna click here, make basic design. Now, we, we're seeing this from the top view. I'm going to move my teeth sort of in the middle because we want to extrude it towards us. So that's, that's quite important. And then what we're gonna do, please do not move the scene at this stage. If you move the scene, it's going to extrude somewhere completely wrong, okay? So do not move the scene at any stage now. Um, you'll see the blue line over here. The blue line goes on the outside and all of the rest is on the inside of the, the actual hybrid. So, okay, extrude top. It says top view because we're viewing it from the top. Now we're viewing it from the, from the front side and we've got this, this tool. This, so it's extruded all the way up there and this one automatically cuts cuts it down. So if I look at it from the right hand side, we can see what it looks like from the right hand side. Now I'm going to rotate it slightly like this, angle it a little bit, and we're going to look at it from each and every angle. Now this isn't set in stone, so don't go and think, oh I've got to make it thinner, thinner or whatever. If you go too thin, it's going to disappear. As you can see, it's gone. Now I'm going to keep it sort of a reasonable height. Okay, it's, like I said, it's not set in stone. We're going to cut, we're going to cut the design now. And this gives us this look. <clears throat> now, Wolf, can you just um, fill us in what these colors are? Yeah, so <clears throat> where you see the orange line, the first bits to the, the, the dark gray, that transparent bit is actually part of a cutting tool that extends outside towards the outside of the hybrid. Then you get the, the gray zone. So each one of these, the light gray zone and the blue top face, we can adjust. Um, so this depends on, on how you want to, to, to shape the bar, but we know that we want to have a bar that can actually follow the morphology of the actual tooth, that bulbousness of the tooth. So we might want to make the bar slender as it goes higher up, but yet on the bottom of the tooth or the midsection, still a bit, bit bulked out. We've always got to consider the parallel nature though. And Michael will show you how this works. Yep, okay, so it's all color coded. So you'll see these like, bluish arrows which relates to the bluish top we've got the other the whiter section the light gray and we've got the dark gray section so let's play with this we're going to click on the arrow and you can see how it goes up and how the blue section goes down 
Okay. Now you can also see these cones, how they pop through there. A thin bar, for example, this, this angle of this bar, which should be more or less 30 degrees, um, it can pop through there. It, it, doesn't, it doesn't matter. So You'll probably see it popping through out there on the side as well. So what is the top of that um, cylinder? Well, that's actually the housing that will house the screw head. Remember, we put that to the top of the cone to level of the top of the screw head. So that will become the actual enclosure of the screw head. So even if it pops out and you there are space constraints, doesn't really matter. But at least we've got the screw head encapsulated in the metal. It becomes part, this becomes part of the cutting tool. Yeah. 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 So so we've we've seen the up and we've seen the down, up and down. Um, we can make it more slender. So if I go shrink, it's going to shrink inwards. As you can see, it's going to make the bar skinnier. Now, we can't make the bar fatter. We can't get it out again. It only goes skinnier. It only shrinks because of, because of the algorithms, a very difficult one. So, But we've got an undo button, so you can undo it. Okay, so this is very important to, to know. Now, we can angle the top, the top blue. So if I click on angle, I'll just zoom in here. We, we can angle this, okay? But we can only angle it to a certain extent because of the thickness in the front. And note, uh, earlier on I said we need curved surfaces. It's a curved um, design at the bottom. And this is the reason why, because if we had a sharp angle, then these vertices here would eventually they will collide. So if I go edit these, these here, they will collide. And this is going to create a problem. Okay, so let's just go back again, undo. So one needs to cast an eye on the anterior section of the bar. Sometimes in CAD work, um, it's a bit deceptive. Things look really big, but in reality, they become super, super thin. So just keep that in mind. And it's also good to measure from time to time. Blender's got a, a ruler where you can just quickly measure. The, the ruler's over here. There's one more thing we need to, to watch out is this, this distance over here. You can imagine if we extrude the bar to such a height, just say over here, then we've got problems because we're cutting through this section. If, and if we want to thicken the hybrid later on, then this is going to be a problem. So we, we need to cast our, our attention on where these screw holes actually finish. That's, that's another thing. So there's quite a few things that we have to consider when we're doing this. Now, um, we've spoken about the shrink, we've spoken about the angle. Now let's talk about the midsection, which creates a step in the bar. So I can, I can move this section up. Oh, it's the other way around now. We can move that section up. We can then move this one up and we can angle it. So there's quite a lot that we can, we can do. And we can shrink that middle in as well. Just be careful not to create any visual undercuts, okay? Um, okay, we'll just move that down just a little bit like that. The reason why I'm saying is when you see something like this here, it means the bar is coming through, of our, through our hybrid. Remember, we want this hybrid to be on the inside, so we have to think about these things. Now, when I click on this icon over here, this is like a heat map. This gives us an indication of where the thin spots are. Now, this is set to double, so it's 1.4. This is 0 0.7 millimeters. So as I say, move that down or angle it, I can move, I can angle this a little bit more maybe. I need to select it like that and angle it more bring it down a little bit more, we can then we can then avoid that as well. So here, 
Okay, so we can't avoid it 100%. In some cases, we don't have a problem at all. But we're going to leave it at that. I think, Wolf, should we remesh it at, at, at this? Yeah, let's go for it, Michael. All right, so um, this will take a little bit of computer th <coughs> thinking time. Remesh into cutter. Be, please be patient with this uh, procedure. Uh, there's a question if we can have a distance color mapping between the bar and the framework to ensure the framework minimal thickness. Like a well, that one, is, that one is a distance color map. You, you, can, um, you can change that, uh, the, the number there, and it'll, it'll then reflect. I should have spoken about that. On the heat map, you could change that, yeah. You, you can change that. Now we'll see this is our cutter, our initial cutter with the cones coming through over there. And um, so at this stage, we're going to click on edit. That will change the color. Now make sure that your, your, um, your cutter comes outside all over the place, which it should, unless something <clears throat> has gone wrong, but it should come come through it. So all of these dots here, we are in edit mode. We can select that and then we can manipulate that. So I can use a G key and I can move that in a little bit if I want to like that. When you do that, please make sure that you don't create any undercuts. You can also see how it bunch, bunches up a little bit. We, we want to make sure that it's, it's nice and even. Okay, so in this one, we don't have we don't have much work to do over here. Maybe here, what I'm going to do is I'm going to move that in just a little bit, like just a little bit like that. Okay, I think that's about it. Here, maybe as well, just a little bit. We we do have a, a button here, push and pull. Now, that's actually quite good because if you're looking at this at 45 degrees and you would take your thumb, you know, and you push it, physically push it, you can push this exactly by 0 0.7 degrees. So I'll press that millimeter. and you see how it's, uh, it's pushed it in by 0, 0 0.7 millimeters. Also, we can pull out. So if I, if I wanted more retention, say in my molar here, I want to bring that up a little bit. I'm going to look at it from the top. I'm going to click the C key. I'm going to select a few vertices over there. Now you don't see my selection, okay? But in transparent mode, you will see my selection over here. And then I'll pull it, I'll pull it by 0 0.7 upwards. And this is very helpful because if your hybrid is too thin in a certain area, you will then thicken, you will thicken that up. Okay, so, so you I'll could just do one spot. Bring it into yeah. the teeth as, as such. You could create even more retention if you wanted to. Well, yeah, you can. Mm. Or you can man manually, you, you can go, you can just, you can pull it up if you want to using the G key and proportional editing. You can basically do whatever you want to do. <clears throat> so there's, there's a lot of opportunity here. Um, but we want to ensure that everything is smooth. And this is, this is very, very important. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go smooth cutter and I'll just give it a quick smooth over just to ensure that we don't have any sharp areas whatsoever. Like here, for example, we're just going to smooth that nicely like that. Okay. Now I don't want you to over smooth the cones because the, the whole objective of the cones is to create a good screw channel. I think that's about it. Uh, Wolf, what do you yeah, think? It looks good. <clears throat> yeah. All right. We're going to exit this and we're going to go to the, the next, the next um, one where we're going to make a safety zone. I'll just save what we've got. Okay, Wolf, can you just explain what the safety zone thing is all about? Yeah, so this is basically, um, remember we had our first check with the masks and then we painted a layer on, and then we're always trying to move uh, work within the hybrid. 
up to this point. So we've had one safety check. This next thickness safety check is a safety zone. That'll make a green transparent layer over this bar cutting tool. And you'll see it then jotting out of the hybrid. And whatever that green, wherever that green safety zone jots out, as you can see, it's jotting out there, it will actually add, automatically add more mesh onto the hybrid. So that green safety zone is set to 1.4, you double it so that we're adding another 0.7 millimeters on, but you can adjust that. So if you think uh, 0.7 is not enough, you can just set that to two or whatever. So wherever you see the green, it's going to actually automatically add um, mesh onto the hybrid. So this is our second um, uh, checking mechanism. So this takes a little bit of thinking time. Again, please be patient. There's a lot of things going on in the background. Okay, we'll just wait for it to do its job. You'll, you'll probably see a little bit of an addition there. I should have moved it in, in hindsight so that we can have a better view of where it's going to add. But so it's added over here and over there. It's added over here. Over here one, as well. One can ask, oh, but why didn't it add um, into the, the tube, into the screw uh, channel? Well, that's because we've used the blue tube in the very beginning to protect it. So the green safety yeah. zone is omitted from those screw holes. That's right. But you need to inspect it because if you've got here, here we can see. You can see a little bit over here. That's because we the the tube is not big enough there. So please always inspect it. I will go back. I'll just go back a step so that we can ensure that that is correct. I'm quite glad this actually did happen because what I'm going to do is I'm going to expose. I'm going to expose my tubes here, my tubes, and I'll select that. <clears throat> the culprit, and we're going to go edit, and I'm going to just take that one, control A to expand it out a little bit like that, okay, expand it out a little bit like that, <clears throat> and then what we're going to do is we're going to do exactly the same thing, so here, so here we've got our safety zone over here, and I'm going to accept that, and we're going to correct the thickness one more time. So these, these tubes are the measure of protecting what is on the inside of these holes. Okay, so we have a look here now. And that's that's protected. You can see that's that's fine. The screw hole is perfectly clear. So and, just and below this, we we've got a couple of uh, deflate and smooth and fill buttons. So from here, uh, feel free to sculpt away. And you know, if you want to add additional little features, uh, you can do that. Good. We the last section we're going to adjust the cement spacer. Now, um, this depends completely on you. We do not have a suggestion of what that should be. Um, a lot of our users have used 0 0.15 and 0 0.2 even. So this is something that you're going to have to figure out yourself, you know, how, how well or not well these two things fit. It, it depends on the equipment you use. There's a lot of factors involved, you know, your the shrinkage of zirconia, there's, there's just a lot of things. So we can't control that. So what we're going to do is we're going to select that and we're going to then click on separate hybrid. Now, we, we do have to remember that we are using Boolean cuts, which are very sophisticated. There can be an occasion where your Boolean cut can fail and then you look at this and you know you've got they're not separate they, they they're both they're still one unit now the reason for that is because bullions when you have 
um, part, one part and another part, and there's a collision of vertices. So uh, object A vertice um, is exactly on top of object B vertice, and the calculation in that will fail, and this is why then a Boolean will fail. Now, the way we, we can circumvent a Boolean fail, failure is by simply making the cement space. So I had one, um, uh, one millimeter, just put it to 1.1 or 1.5 or whatever, just adjust it a little bit, which will then move the vertices apart to a different uh, you know, they don't collide. So if you can think of it from a mathematical point of view, and then usually it will it will work. So, you know, um, yeah. All right, now we've got part part A and we've got part B. So this is this is the bar. And okay, we can see there's a little hole in this one. Now this isn't a hole in the mesh, it's simply because when when we made the when when we made the bar, we could have we could have pulled that the cutter out a little bit. So we we what I can do is I can go into the model designer and just cut that away. That's fine. That's easy, easy fix. Or we can go um, control Z back a few steps and then pull the cutting tool out just a little bit. Um, that's very easily done. So um, I'm not going to do it in this video, but um, you, you just go control Z and pull this the cutter out a little bit. Let's have a look at the opposite side. Over here, we've got our, um, yeah, it's looking really nice. Hey, Wolf, what do you think? Yeah, it's looking good. It's looking good. So we, um, we, we have the ability to close the screw holes as well. And we've got the ability to add retention on the bar, but also retention, cement retention on the inside of the hybrid. Yeah, this is correct, Wolf. And um, I, th I guess, you know, closing screw holes, you could argue, but then you can't use it, that implant. But we're not really talking about this hybrid itself. We, 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 we can think of it as, okay, you, you're making a three unit bridge, yeah? And the dentist may want to cement it on top of a bar. Now, how do we close the holes? And this is why we've actually included this. And it's quite easy to do. All we need to do is we select our hybrid and then we, um, we click on select hybrid to start which then exposes our tubes again, our fantastic tubes coming to the rescue. So here I'm going to select the tube, which hole I want to be closing. And then we're going to select your tube and block hole. And by the way, if you ever get stuck, just read the tool tips. They will appear there for 100 seconds. So it gives you ample time to, to read through these tool tips. Okay, we're going to just click on that. So again, this takes a little bit of time to calculate. You can, if you want to, you can select more than one at a time. You don't have to do one. You can you can select more than one. Now, if we look at the the inside of this, we can see how this is blocked off very, very nicely. We've got this whole thing blocked out quite nicely. And of course, we would then need to maybe smooth it a little bit. You just click on that and you just smooth that and make, make it nice, make it part of the your, your, your anatomy. It's very easy, easy to do like that. Like that, that's it, exit. Perfect. Okay, now finally we can, we can if we want to make um, retention, we can select the hybrid or the, the, the inside of it. And then in the additional tool section, select part for grooves. You click on that one and that'll create these, these lines. And um, 
they've been per, they've been placed with the design that we initially did. If you don't move the dark gray area up like we have, then these will be lower down as well. These we can we can make these smaller or larger. Okay. Now, of course, these won't mill. Okay. So we we only talking about maybe SLS laser sintering of metal or maybe um, castable printing and castable resin and then you know casting this structure um, yeah so this is more for you know that type of um, technology So we'll just wait. This this takes a little while as well to just to calculate all. So Wolf, have you got anything to add in this so far? Uh, no, not Are there really. Any questions? No, I'm keeping my eye on the questions. Um, we can just have a round table after this. Okay, good. So okay, this this has done the done its trick. We can see how nicely it's um, cut the retention, and of course the same thing will then apply to the the top as well. Select grooves part for the grooves. It will give you a suggestion. We're going to make these a little bit thinner. Um, so you can make them thicker or thinner, but the reason why I'm making them thinner is so that I've, I've got them a little bit more spaced apart, and then we're going to click on cut retention. Again, for milling, wouldn't really work. If you're plastic printing this hybrid, yeah, that could be a good option. I think that sort of covers it. Well, how much time do we have left? Oh, we're pretty much spot on, Michael. Good. All right, let's have a look. It's, it's like opening up a Christmas present to see what's inside. Okay, that's looking quite nice. All right, okay. I'm going to stop sharing my screen.